Welcome to tonight's show where we're just going to be talking about some stuff. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> this is the real intro. But yeah, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. It's hard to explain. Becky Hammond became, becomes a coach. Lots of stuff happened in the NFL, NBA, things are happening. So let's just jump right into it. Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. going on everybody welcome words my face my name is brian with me as always producer extraordinaire brendan yo and we are the one and only home of the chewbacca chainsaws <laughs> and you see we you might notice something a little bit different that we have going on right now we have little name things on the bottom of our, our screens and um, if you notice, mine says cooler guy. That's because Brendan put cool guy, and then he took his away before we started the show, so now I look like a total D-bag for having cooler guy up there. Just like you are. Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice at all. Let me see if I can flip it off and flip it back on. There we go. Now the D-bag status has been, been removed. Okay, but tonight it is Thursday. It is a sports night. And if you do follow me on Twitter, at what's my face on Twitter, um, I talked about how I had a sleepless night last night. And that was because, um, not only because Chewbacca was in a bad mood, eh, you can never be sure about that, but um, it's because the whole football season has pretty much kicked off today. Yeah, I know the Hall of Fame game was last Sunday, and that's the kind of kick off the preseason. But tonight, we had a ton of games going on, so a lot of great action. We'll talk about some of that. Uh, uh, of course, there's crazy stuff going on in baseball right now, coming into the close of the season. Yeah, we're in the home stretch, you know, the last month, month and a half of really important games coming up, so we'll talk about that. But let's start it off this week the same way we started off every Thursday, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> And he's still he's still choreographing everything, still choreographing. <laughs> but uh, um, so this week's award goes to a, a fine lady, and her name is Becky Hammond. And she doesn't only get this award because she's played 16 stellar seasons in the WNBA. She was named one of the 15 greatest players the NBA, WNBA has ever had. Um, not only is she fourth in career assists, but it is because Miss Becky Hammond has become the first full-time female coach in the NBA. And you say full-time coach, so what level of coach is she? She's actually an assistant coach. She'll probably break it down and work on like defensive drills or offensive drills. I'm not exactly what her, sure what her forte is. I would imagine offensive drills. But um, she will be on the bench during games. She is getting paid for this, so that's a first. Uh, they've had other female coaches come through not really get paid, just kind of like interns, see how things are happening. Um, but it's pretty cool. And now she is being welcomed in by the San Antonio Spurs franchise because she did play with their wow. crosstown counterpart, uh, the That's San Antonio Spurs. That's not a bad team. That's not a bad team at all. No, and I mean, if you look at this organization, any organization like San Antonio, and people might say this will be a little bit of a controversy. I, I don't see it at all. I don't see why it would matter, a woman coaching or anything like that. Because when you boil it down, yeah, the style of play is a little different between the WNBA and the NBA, but the basic X's and O's are there. So this is a San Antonio team that doesn't kill anybody. They're they're not like the Clippers. They're not like, hey, let's just dunk it 50 times every night. You know, they're they're more of a finesse. They're more of a set offense, set defense. So I think she's going to fit in really good there. Um, just a she's little bit of a. Be- anyway, huh? right now she's not the head coach. She has time to to learn how things are going to go and take. You know, she has someone over her to instruct on whatever the differences are going to be uh, for style. So yeah, and I don't fine. even expect her to become a head coach in the NBA. But uh, I mean, because great well, Popovich is there. 
<laughs> well, yeah, that's true. No, most people didn't expect a female assistant coach full time, so that's. I'm kinda... saying most people don't. Be, most assistant coaches don't become head coaches. Yeah, that's kind of a difficult job to get. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, she kind of had a few um, quotes I was reading from her press, press conference that uh, kind of were interesting to me. Um, when she was asked about, you know, the difference in style of play between men and women, she said, you know, the physicality is definitely different. Uh, athleticism is different, a lot of different, but here are the, the, the actual quote. When it comes to things of the mind, things like coaching, game planning, coming up with offensive and defensive schemes, there's no reason why a woman couldn't and shouldn't be in the mix. So I totally agree with her. Uh, I think she's got a good head on her shoulders. And she actually, people don't know that she kind of got integrated into the San Antonio Spurs team last year. Uh, She was actually rehabbing from an ACL injury. So she was uh, around that same sports complex. I believe the same owner owns both teams. Um, and she actually got to sit in a few uh, film sessions and a few practices with them, and Popovich kind of just said, you know what, come, come on, if you're interested, I'll teach you some of the ropes, and she seems to be an apt pupil. I mean, Popovich describes her as having a very impressive basketball IQ, so, I, I mean, again, where else were, would you want to rather go than the San Antonio Spurs with one of the most solid coaching systems slash team slash general manager? Just top to bottom, that's a great organization to work for. It's like working for Google. I mean, just one of those teams that everybody wants to get in there on. Because Google. Come on, I want to work for Google. Google, if you want to hire me, I'll, I'll come work for you. Anytime. Don't worry, I will drop everything I have here in D.C., fly out to, where are they at? Uh, San Francisco? They're actually all over the place. Yeah, fly they're, they're, out to wherever you want me to. Main, they have a main headquarters, I don't know, I, I think in Washington somewhere. But uh, they're all over the place. They have offices. Wherever you want I think me they have Google. an office not too far from here. Google, I don't mind if you want to send me to Antarctica. Let me know because I know you're a great place to work for. And Brian will be your official sportscaster. I will, I will. <laughs> Slash entertainment guru. So, you know, I, got, I, I can wear two hats. Huh? 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 All right, that's where you want me, so I stop. There we go. Because we know that if you don't want me, I just keep going and going and going. That is how I roll. No, I didn't <laughs> That, that was an unnecessary womp. That was one too many womps. Now, now I can't even do the show anymore. I'm so distraught. I'm out of here. And the womps just keep coming for him. So, but yeah, so Becky Hammond, um, I salute you, and you do get our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award. So that was actually a main topic, even though the, usually the, the Chewbacca Chainsaw Award isn't usually a main topic. But let's take that, roll that into other basketball talk. And that is Kevin Durant um, with, has withdrawn from the FIBA World Cup basketball team. And what? now... I know. I know. I know. And, and I don't like to see this. I like to see Kevin Durant, you know, representing our country because he is like the best from our country. <laughs> you wouldn't want the best from your country representing you? No, you would. You would. That's that's just kind of how how you like it to go. Kevin Durant, you're the man. Eh? Eh? All right, this is a Durant right. MVP, no, 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 no. two-time Chewbacca yeah. Chainsaw Award winner. He's won what? more than that. He's won like 15 of those, probably. And, and he wins one every he... week, whether you realize it or not. So what? Why isn't he? Why is he dropping out? What, what's well, going on? Well, he says it's due to mental and physical fatigue. Now. Granted, if you look at his season, he played the 82 games from the regular season. He played another 20 so or so odd games for the playoffs, and so this is a really a lot. I mean, yeah, but aren't yeah. there other players on the team that have the same situation? Yeah, yeah, there are some, but eh. I come mean, on, Kevin Durant. I'm sorry, come on, come on, you're supposed to be the top. No, no, no. I think he's allowed to take this time off. Number one. After the injury to Paul George, nobody really wants to be on that court. Number two is a lot of these players um, are a little bit younger than Durant. Now, I'm not saying Durant is over the hill by any meaning, but he does have a couple more years on his legs than a couple of these other players like the Steph Currys, the Kyrie Irvings, and, and players like that. Like Derrick Rose is playing. He hasn't played in a whole year, so he has no wear and tear on his legs right now except for all of the ACL injuries. All of them. All of them. He has a lot of them. So, uh, not so, like, a 152. It's been brutal. How do you have 152 and still walk? I don't know. That's to you, Derek Rose. My compliments. But, yeah, 
But really, if you look at it, and this is like the serious underlining of what's going on with Kevin Durant, the reason he's not playing, is because they cut his boys John Wall and Bradley Beal off the team. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. He was so bitter about that, he made up the excuse about being tired, even though it wouldn't be an excuse if he really wants it to be the excuse, because he's Kevin Durant and he can really say anything he wants and never be wrong. Um, but it's because his boys, we talked about it last week, he's boys with those guys. He wanted to play with them. He wants to play Why with them. They, easy. they got cut just because there's uh, too much bias on the national team, and Coach Kershevsky wants to take all of his Duke players and put them on the national basketball team. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, not really. I don't know. Uh, they're, they're younger players. Uh, I think Bradley Beal would have been great on this squad because – when you get into international basketball, it's more about shooting, and Bradley Beal is one of the better shooters. Also, I think John Wall would have fit perfectly because he's the best defender out of all the guards there. So to have a little bit of a change of pace, I think Krzyzewski is really missing the boat on that. But he is just one of the most legendary basketball coaches of all time, so I won't question him too much more than that. But uh, Okay, let's question him. I'm questioning you now. Shake the camera question. That's that's what I'm going to call that one. Shake the camera question. That's how serious it is. <laughs> that is how serious it is. But, yeah, so it's sad to see because we've had Paul George go down, of course, with that horrible catastrophic, catastrophic injury. I can't even say catastrophic. It was so catastrophic to me and traumatizing because if you saw that replay, ouch. All I got to say is, I'm sorry, man. That sucks. You were a good player. You weren't on my team. I didn't really like you that much because you beat my team, but you were a good player, and I like to see the best play. So, Paul George, here's to a speedy recovery. Um, yeah, because that's pretty bad. But one thing about Paul George's in injury that does kind of spice it up, uh, is spicing up a word? No. No, it is not. It is now. Spicing up. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm spicing up the joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like this chicken, but it could use some spicing it up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, just walk me. I'll, uh, You're slow on the walk trigger. You need to be faster on this walk trigger. I was trying but, to yeah. get to the boo. Oh, uh. uh, well, I'm glad you couldn't find the boo. The poo's just... <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, so... But... What I was saying about Paul George is it really makes the Eastern Conference extremely interesting this year, and that's because he was on top of the team that was supposed to be on top of the East, and now without him, without Lance Stevenson, they really don't have much of a direction. These guys are going to be hurting, and that was for lack of a better term. I did not mean that as a pun because of his injury. And by the way, I mean, if you saw that, like, we, we only need one replay ESPN. Honestly, just one. You don't ever need to show it more than once, like, a day. That thing was horrible. I mean, do you know what I'm talking about? Did you see the... No, nah, I didn't see it. What were you talking about? So he was, it was a scrimmage game last Friday. He goes up for a, uh, to block a layup. Uh, his foot kind of hits the where the, back, uh, the, the basketball hoop goes up, and literally his leg goes from like this, like straight up like it's supposed to be, to like that. And, yeah. So he'll never be the same. But the East should be interesting. That is unless... Cleveland gets Kevin Love, which it looks like it's going to happen. They are going to put that trade through for Andrew Wiggins. I wish they wouldn't because we're looking at an East that the Wizards could win. Because uh, I am a homer. Uh, we'll see. Yes. Yes, Maybe. they could win. Just agree. Just agree. And Maybe then if we, we get there's Kevin one, Durant. Maybe when Kevin Durant decides to come play with us, then hey, we're going to win. If the Wizards win the East, like it's a lock that Kevin Durant will come play with us. So... Come on, Wizards, let's win the East. But yeah, so that's kind of our basketball roundup. And you'll notice tonight we're just going to start quick-firing topics. It's not going to be one solid, real, like we normally do, three segments. We're just going to have fun with quick it. quick-firing if you weren't talking about it so much. Oh, uh, you're right, you're right. But let us know what you think about any of the basketball stories. What do you think about Becky Harmon, uh, Hammond? I uh, shouldn't say Harmon Hammond, um, being the first female full-time head, uh, not head, assistant coach in the NBA. And about what do you think about Kevin Durant stepping down from the team, saying he's too tired? Is that the real truth, or is he just pissed that uh, Wall and Beal got cut? My vote is on the latter. But, hey, let us know, at wordsmyfaceontwitter.com. Do I have to say .com on Twitter? 
Um, no. In fact, if you do Dakota at wordsmyface.com, you probably won't get anything. Don't put... That's not us. Yeah, so that at wordsmyface on Twitter, wordsmyface at gmail.com, of course, Google+, Plus, Facebook, comments down below, always a great way to get a hold of us. Um, so let us know what you think about some of those NBA stories. And let's take that, and let's roll that into the baseball talk. And that is, be first I want to talk a little bit about the biogenesis scandal. Now, if you remember last year, almost at the exact date, um, about 13, 12 to 13 suspensions were handed down because of this biogenesis fallout. And biogenesis is a little clinic down in Florida where the owner, Anthony Bosch, was just arrested. Um, and, well, actually he surrendered to the DEA on conspiracy to distribute uh, anabolic steroids charges. So not the best thing you want to hear. And now actually 10 people uh, as well a, a link to the case have been arrested, all pretty much like doctors and whoever worked at the Biogenesis Clinic. But last year at this time you had some of the biggest names in baseball get suspended right before the playoffs. And you had Ryan Braun, you had Melky Cabrera, Nelson Cruz, Alex Rodriguez, so on and so on. And they all missed the playoffs really kind of casting a black cloud over just the whole postseason last year. Wipe the brow because there will be no new players suspended and there is no new players actually linked uh, to biogenesis that have not already been heard about. So mm -hmm. trying to dodge the bullet there and let's hope that MLB can finally clean up their system, which we know they can't, but... You can yeah, help. one would hope, because that's been kind of a, I don't know, a, a stigma or a stain on the MLB for a while now. Yeah, past uh, 20 years. Yeah, it, it's been bad, and it it hasn't helped the this the sport that's it's already declining. Like, we've, we've talked about many times before. Baseball used to be America's sport. Just straight up and down, that's America's sport. Um, but over the last few decades, it's definitely been declining. Part of that's because simply other sports have been gaining popularity. Some of it's because, uh, you know, baseball has all these these problems. They'll have strikes all the time. They have these these drug scandals more so than other sports for some reason. I, I don't know if they're just worse at covering it up well, or if they're just I, worse at I just think it. it was just more prevalent. They have a stronger union than any of the other unions. And so, uh, I mean, especially when you compare it to NFL and NBA, uh, you don't see it as much because they have stricter standards on testing, I believe, in those leagues. So now they're catching up to it in baseball, and baseball is actually going a step beyond what a lot of those leagues do. But it was so lax for so long that, you really you suffered, and uh, the end product is you yeah, had a lot of people involved. Right away. Yeah, I mean, think yeah, about so, the biggest yeah. events from the past 20 years: the home run derby between McGuire and Sosa to get the record, and then Bonds and then breaking the out. record. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and then, then uh, the overall drugs. home run record. Yeah, and then drugs. Exactly. <laughs> there was that. That was probably the the pinnacle of like, hey baseball might get back in the limelight because of those two guys, because of McGuire and Sosa competing for the home run record, something that's great, both in the same year, about to shatter things, and everyone's like, hey, let's pay attention to baseball again. This is exciting. This can be pretty cool. And, and then it's... And then drugs. Yeah, drugs exactly. <laughs> this is your, your body. This is your body on drugs. Actually, for them, it it's was, all it was about hard, but... hey. So now it's less impressive because you guys just shot up a bunch of stuff to, to yeah. be able to do this. Yeah, like in the case of Barry Bonds, you saw his body and his head get fatter and fatter and fatter until there was nothing you could do except for say he's on some sort of drugs. I mean, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm glad that the Biogenesis saga is behind us. We can all move forward now and hope that we don't ever have to run into this thing again. But, unfortunately, when you have competitive sports, the the whole green-eyed monster of jealousy is always going to rear his ugly head and somebody's going to yeah. try to do something to get ahead. And, and, and maybe baseball is especially susceptible because they do get uh, potentially the most pay, often the most most pay, um, because they, baseball doesn't have a cap. They, uh, the big baseball teams do have a whole lot of money, um, so they do shell out a lot of money. Um, so there's more motivation there, but there's also, you know, it, it's a little bit, I don't want to say an individual sport, 
but there's a lot of opportunity for individuals to shine by um, boosting their own abilities, like whether helping your hitting game, which always gets attention, um, or being faster out on the field because you know, there is team aspects to it, but there's a lot of strong individual aspects that you don't necessarily see in some of the other big sports. Like, I mean, you're well, certainly you know, correct. Uh, whereas football would be more of a team sport, like one guy on the offensive line, if he messes up, that can ruin a whole play. Basketball, same thing. You have one guy, you're supposed to set a pick on this area, does not, everything goes to hell. Baseball, it's it's a lot more individual. Now, there are some team plays, like, for instance, like a double play, a triple play, getting guys out. You do need one guy to throw two of the other guys, so you need both of them to yeah. do the right thing. It's, it's not an right, individual it's sport, but there is that time. It's more so of an individual sport. They try to stand out a bit more, maybe, you know, especially because, again, they also have the motivation of higher major pay and everything like that. So That's true. So, But, yeah, again, glad to see that issue behind us. And that brings me on to one other thing I want to call shenanigans real quick, and that is on the Detroit Tigers and the Tampa Bay Rays, because it is not fair for you to have the past three Cy Young AL winners on your roster. And when I say that, they traded for David Price, talked about that during a trade deadline talk. He won last year, I mean two years ago, AL Cy Young. The year before that was Justin Verlander, and last year was Max Scherzer, so... Yeah, you're cheating, and we all know it. Maybe not with steroids, but there's some. You got some sort of dirt on the Tampa Bay Rays that, like, you have like pictures of the owner in his underwear or something. That's why they traded you David Price for like nothing. I mean, come on, this is like the biggest, the biggest stacking the chips to one side that I've seen in a long time. And um, yeah, I, I still think that the Oakland A's are gonna win, but you never know. We'll find out. But I call shenanigans. We need to Maybe have it's drugs. Sort of... Maybe it is Maybe drugs. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe they have pictures of their other players using drugs or of the owner using drugs. Maybe they did like, uh, like one of those Maybe movies where they them unconscious and like stuck them with drugs. Yeah. And maybe they have pictures of someone taking pictures of them doing drugs. <laughs> it's pictures of pictures taken with drugs being done. That is coming straight from words from my face, rumor mill, allegedly. I will always say allegedly when we make up crazy stuff like that. And it's not even allegedly because nobody has alleged it. But yes, we are going to say it right now. no basis for this other than I got this feeling. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a feeling deep inside, you know. And that tells him that maybe they have a picture of somebody taking a picture of somebody doing drugs while knocked unconscious by a secret Soviet spy. Why the Soviets would be spying, I don't know. Especially since the Soviet Union broke up, like, decades ago. It's, it's a time-traveling Soviet spy <laughs> that came to the future to drug an owner of the Tampa Bay Rays while somebody took pictures, and then somebody else took pictures of that picture. Yeah, the Soviets kind of assumed back then that there would, uh, there would still be the Cold War going on, so they wanted to ruin America's favorite sport from the time. <laughs> that's, that they left. that's what they were doing. They put a it didn't work out as well, but they still had to finish the job. They didn't yeah. anticipate that, that baseball would go downhill a little bit, so... So, you know, and that the Soviet Union would break up. And yeah, you know, would be Putin's still trying to pull that thing together, so you never know. Yeah, about it's that. not happening right now. <laughs> oh, and this just turned into words my face politics. Yeah, okay, that would so, be our yeah, we're, just, we're, <laughs> we're really just having fun filling this show. But um, yeah, then I, the last MLB subject I wanted to talk about was the stupid unwritten rules in baseball. Now, these have been around since about 1870 when the sport started, where it's stupid little things like uh, when when you're out, let's say, let's say I'm on the opposing team, I hit a ball, ground ball, I run to first, I'm out at first. When I'm running back to my dugout, which is on the other side of the field, if I run across the mound, you automatically you're going to get hit by a pitch the next time you stand up for bat. Like, it's crazy stuff like what? that. Like, you hit my player, I hit your two of your players. Uh, I mean, there's just all these crazy little idiosyncrasies in baseball that make no sense to 95% of the people who play slash watch baseball, but these players decide to hold on to with the their death grip, and they won't let them go. And that is because Andrew McCutcheon just this week got hit in the back and suffered a really serious back injury uh, just a night after Paul Goldsmith of the Arizona Diamondbacks got hit in the hand and broke his hand. So 
Paul Goldsmith gets up. I believe some one of the pirates got hit earlier. It didn't look like on purpose. I'm not 100% sure on that. But he got hit, so they were going to retaliate by hitting one of their better players on the Arizona Diamondbacks, and that's Paul Goldsmith. Smith. Paul breaks his hand. Can't play anymore for the rest of the season. Now, not as big of a deal. He's a great player. You don't want to ever see an injury like that. But Arizona really isn't in contention. But right now, Pittsburgh is in one of the hottest races to win their division with the Milwaukee Brewers and the St. Louis Cardinals. And Andrew McCutcheon has been playing at an all-star level. So he gets up, and what do they say? Hey, it's our turn to get back at you guys. Beans him right in the back. He might have broken a rib, for all I know. I mean, it looked painful. And now he's Mm -hmm. out for the next four to six weeks. And so what have you done? You've taken the sport, which is usually a lot of fun, great to watch, taking one of the most exciting players out there, and you've ruined them due to your unwritten rules. I mean, it's ridiculous. What are you guys thinking? Do you want to ruin your sport? Do you not want people in America to watch it? I mean, Pittsburgh is a sports town. Through and through, it's a sports town. They support their Steelers better than almost any other team except for Washington people. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> but they have they support their hockey team, and everybody knows hockey's not that exciting. So if you have that... raucous support for your hockey team, and yeah. then their baseball um, team was finally doing good. I was going to ask, though, okay, now do we think this is another one of those things heard in sport like we just talked about. There's lots of things heard in baseball right now lowering its popularity. Is it the the immaturity and just the, the bitterness that goes into some of these retaliatory attacks that are just unsportsmanlike that it, it's hurting the sport? Or is this maybe something that, that for a lot of people it makes it more exciting? As, like you were just talking about hockey and how uh, Pittsburgh likes, likes hockey. Hockey is another sport that there is a lot of just, you know, bitter fights. Yeah, know? but the difference between that and hockey is in hockey, if you're going to get into a fight, let's say one player gets a big hit on your star player, what do you do? You go get your two goons off your bench, you send them in, and, and they fight. You have, like, special fighters for that. You don't go after the star players. Uh, Sidney Crosby never gets into fights, and that's because he would probably get whooped in most of them and possibly injured, and nobody wants to do that to, to some degree, it's also a bit of a uh, more fair fight because it's an actual fight. It's yeah. you know, two guys duking it out or whatever. Not me throwing it's, a ball at you. Yeah. At 100 miles an hour, possibly ending your career. Uh, I mean, think about yeah, one of those pitches that they go to the head. Up from behind and like beating a guy uh, with his, his stick to the back while he's not, or like, you know, hitting with his, 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 the blade of his, um, his skate. In the yeah, back or something like that. Well, I mean, uh, related to like, let's let's talk about football. Uh, I mean, let's say yeah, the, uh, the New Orleans happens. Saints. Yeah. Well, nah, New Orleans Saints a bad example. They had the whole bounty gate scandal. Yeah. Let's say well, another the, team. There you go. Though that was a scandal, though. Like people mm-hmm. don't like yeah, to see. Didn't like it. But let's talk about let's say the Denver Broncos. Let's say Peyton Manning gets sacked, and it's a really hard sack. You don't have John Fox on the sidelines telling Vaughn Miller, all right, next play, I want you to go in there, and I want you to take their quarterback out of his career, just to, like, hit him in his knees. It mm-hmm. doesn't happen like that. I mean, it it's like, okay, they hit our guy hard. Well, we want to hit him hard, but let's do it cleanly. You know, it, it's it just becomes a childish yeah. sport if it's just... And unnecessary Ooh. roughness is oh. something we get pissed uh, about a lot because there are severe penalties against it, and we always think, hey... That was stupid for my team to do. We're mm-hmm. hurting ourselves in the game because there's a real incentive against doing stupid stuff like unnecessary roughness or bad hits that are clearly going to give uh, bad injuries and things like that. Yeah, you know what? And if you want to show set an example to the other team, you want to say, hey, you, you did this to our player. We're not going to stand up for it. How about you strike out their best player five times in a night and show them, hey, you know what? All you're going to do is fuel our anger to play better you know, mm-hmm. fuel that passion we have inside instead of saying, hey, uh, you hit my best player, now I'm going to hit you right in the back, so get ready for it. I mean, it, it's kind of a bad precedent, you know. I, in major sports, I, I don't think that really has any place, but it's been there for over 100 years, so... That, that's another question. What, what, what does baseball do about it? Like, do they do anything? Well, or is, There's not really there. much penalties. Like, if you hit a guy that's, that's, a, that's at bat, he gets a base. They, okay. Yeah, they barely suspend their players for stuff like that. They need to do a lot more. And that's, again, that's part of the problem is that the institution has not cracked down on it more 
And so you see it happening. And again, it's been happening for the past hundred years, and so it seems like they're content to let it go on. But I say clean up the sport a little bit more, and you might have a more exciting sport because your best players will still be there to make it exciting, you know. So eh, that's just my two cents. Let us know what you guys think uh, about any of our baseball stories. Hit us up at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com. Of course, comments down below, and Google Plus and, Twi- and Facebook. All things you can get a hold of us at. I uh, would love to know what you think about that stupid unwritten rules, how shenanigans should be called on Detroit, and what was our first baseball story? Oh, yeah, Biogenesis is gone. Bye-bye. So, yeah, let us know what you think. Hit us up. And let's roll it on to the very final part of the story. And this is the part of this, uh, of this story, the show, that actually kept me up late last night. If you read my Twitter, I already told you about that. And that is really, today is the start of the football season. All right, everybody, break out your jerseys. The football preseason. Yeah, breaking out the jerseys. You know, you get to watch watch your team go full pads, live action. Now, it's not the most exciting, the the first game. Usually the starters only go in for eight to ten plays or maybe one good series. But You want to know something? You want to know how much I care? Very little. You know why? Because it's football. I haven't had football in the last, what, six months? It's been a while. Well, luckily, they try to make it into like a 24-hour, I mean, 12-month news cycle, and that's worked out pretty well. I mean, how many weeks have we gone by on Words from My Face without a football story? Not very, Not very many. many. Thankfully. But thank you, we have to see for doing play. that. And we got to see a yes. nice game tonight. Actually, our team did well. Yeah. Uh, very Patriots well. got whooped by the Redskins 23-6, to so go Redskins. Uh, both offense and defense looked nice. Unfortunately, we did not see Pierre Garçon or Deshaun Jackson play. They tweaked um, minor injuries in pl- in practice this week. But all in all, the Redskins look good. Patriots, I mean, you can't really judge them on this because do they care about preseason? Probably not. They know Tom Brady's going to show up, and that's about all they need, it seems like. But, yeah, so let's run down a couple of the uh, the bigger stories coming out of the training camps and start with uh, Hoyer is named as preseason starter over Johnny Menzel. So um, all you Ooh. people out there who was like, uh, we love Johnny Menzel. He's so talented and great. Um, yeah, he might not even really make the field. Now, I don't think this a, was even one of your your five reasons of why he was going to fail. in, in Because uh, there was in, another quarterback there? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brian Hoyer, though, he was decent last year when he played. Um, but, yeah, so you see him kind of take a step back. Now, this could be a little bit of uh, we want Manziel to play more, so the starters do not play very off, very much in the first game, so maybe they're like, well, we want him to get a good half of football practice in there of live action, see what he can do. So maybe that's what they're doing. But just everything I've heard doesn't sound too great for Manziel in camp this year. Um, he has had some team, first team reps, but not too many. And it just seems like when they do give him the opportunity, he isn't quite there. Now, of course, they are doing the whole spin cycle where they're talking about, well, uh, he's just getting used to it, and there's a lot of verbiage and a lot of new things, but nah, we'll see. I mean, maybe yeah. maybe they're maybe they're just trying to train him up for the future, which is not not an unsmart move, but who knows? Maybe they'll do something else with them. Maybe they'll trade them. Yeah. Because if they do yeah. already have a good quarterback in place, I mean, they have plenty of other yeah, positions they need some quarterback. I wouldn't call Brian Hoyer a good quarterback. I just they have a better quarterback in place. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Again, I'm not a fan of Menzel. I think he'll fail, but I'm not sure that Brian Hoyer is better than him, so I won't go that far. Uh, moving on, uh, we have Romo will sit. Uh, w- uh, former first-round pick of the Cleveland Cavaliers from two years ago, Brandon Whedon will actually start there. And um, it's funny when you're a first-round pick and then you're not even on that same team two years later, and they've already drafted two more, three more quarterbacks since then. So yeah, yeah good luck for good luck and great job signing Tony Romo to a you know great huge extension worth over a hundred million dollars, uh, Cowboys, and then he can't even make the field because he's got. Crazy back surgery, I believe he just went through this off season. So, hmm. smart move, Jerry Jones. Well, to be Not fair, to be sure. we we had some fun times, you know, getting a second round or not second round, uh, a second place pick, trading a whole lot for it, and then getting him injured the first year and really badly and screwing up his next year and. All right, well, he played well for at least a year, so, <laughs> so that's, that's one better year. He did play very well that first that's year. One better year than Brandon Whedon's had. That's one better year. Oh, um, and I'm getting breaking news. 
Um, this is coming in from our satellite system in Chicago, Illinois. I don't know why we have a satellite in Chicago, but we do. Um, and that is, uh, yeah, let me just, um, let me confirm these. De- are you sure about those? Okay. Really, those are the details. Okay. Um, just in, <laughs> Cowboys are going to suck. So, yeah, get ready for like a 5 to 11 season from them. Um, after losing Sean Lee to a catastrophic injury, watching a mass exodus of a lot of their other players, and then signing Tony Romo and their left tackle Smith to $100 million deals. Um, yeah, you've put yourself in position to be bad and be bad for a long time. So look for if them to score really- a ton of points. If there are any Cowboys fans out there watching, we we don't want to alienate you. We know it, yes, we it's do. okay. We do want to alienate we, you. <laughs> now, we here at Words From My Face appreciate you, and we'll give you yep. every opportunity for you to switch sides and come to the Redskins. Side. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll welcome you with open arms. Right there. Come on, guys. No, yeah. I or should at least put go this to the Texas disclaimer. Or whatever. As, as a Redskins fans here, we are DC fans. That is our rival, so... I will say homerism alert, but yeah, I'm gonna keep doing it anyway, so you can't really stop me. Yeah. No. Can't, can't wait, hold it. on, more news. Wait, no, same news. Same news. <laughs> but yeah. So um now I did just bash the Cowboys. Let me do a little bit of Redskins bashing, and that is that Dan owner of the Washington Redskins, Daniel Snyder, he really should just shut up. Uh, He does not make his point about the name very well, and he just says the same thing over and over. And the more canned interviews you have, where it's like, okay, ask me this question, I will give you this response. It seems like it's scripted. I've seen it at least three times being here in the local area. It's not a good look, Dan. It's, It's really not. When everybody knows that, okay, these are the written responses, it's like writing a script for a commercial. It, well, it doesn't really feel like it's coming from your heart. I, I get what you're saying. He's absolutely terrible with the Just go with ahead and like, hire me, and I yeah. will talk about the press from now on. Okay. You know, I mean, go just, just – pl- I'll tell you what. Dan Snyder, you have my permission to go ahead and plaster my Redskins video, um, all Redskins video about the name controversy, everywhere you want, anywhere and everywhere. We will let you do it. Go ahead, Dan. We'll take it from here. Yes. And unless you're not willing to change the name to the potatoes, like the Redskin potatoes. No, the logo. We can the say. logo to the potatoes. Oh, yeah, the logo to the potatoes. Yeah, but when we said that, we had a guy who said that that might be even more offensive. So we're just going to call ourselves the Redskin Potatoes and keep the logo the same. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that doesn't work. That, that makes work. no sense. <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense. But that's what we want to do here at Words My Face. But, yeah, so um, last note on the NFL. Well, we have two more notes. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, drafted this year by the Vikings, is taking first team reps. He's looking to be the first uh, team starter for their preseason opener this Saturday. Um, So that looks interesting. Bridgewater out of Louisville. A lot of people considered him to be the best quarterback in the draft, but then he suffered a pretty bad injury uh, towards the middle of last year. So, um, well, I I think he has a lot of talent, and I think the Vikings are better for having him. So that's something to be said. And then the last NFL note is that Martellus Bennett, uh, the tight end right now for the Chicago Bears, formerly of the Giants and formerly of the Cowboys, um, got suspended for fighting in practice. Now, hmm. fighting in practice is something that happens in every NFL practice that goes on in the preseason. And that's just because the guys are out there. You know, they're fighting for their team. They're fighting for their position. They, you know, it's usually a lot of third stringers going up against each other and being like, okay, I'm not going to take this anymore, get really angry. And, and you like to see a little bit of chippiness, especially during these uh, preseason um, workouts. And that's just to keep the competitive juices f- flying. You know, once they get into the regular season – you can see them stop channeling that aggression towards themselves and channel it outwards towards their opponents. So you'll see that kind of calm down. But I kind of find it ridiculous. I didn't see the fight. Maybe he went above and beyond and like started beating him with his helmet or something. Um, Maybe he tried to go after the wrong person. Uh, Maybe he tried to go after some of the the bigger the bigger players and like uh, threatened to to really injure some of the bigger players. And that's that's can cost the team money. You know. So well. I, again, I don't have all the details in that, but I just think it's stupid. So, yeah, that's our NFL preseason notes that just went on, and we have been doing the series where I give you a NFL division, counting down to the weeks uh, leading into the season opener. And since we had started at six weeks and we had eight divisions, I'm going to give you two divisions tonight, and I will call these lightning round divisions because these divisions aren't 
really all that interesting, so I didn't want to dedicate too much time to him. Let's Lightning start with round. the AFC South. Lightning round. So let's start with the NF AFC South, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and dub that worst division in football. Uh, yeah, they're pretty horrendous from top to bottom, except for the top is pretty good. Uh, let's just start with what I think is the bottom. Uh, you have the Jacksonville Jaguars coming in from last season's spectacular performance. They were ranked 32nd on offense and 31st on defense. Yay. Giving them the combined rank of 31.5 overall, which I don't quite know how it works, but they were horrible. They still had a better record than the Redskins. I don't know how that happens. Mm -hmm. You had to throw that last part in there, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. Just I got to be fair. Ass. I was hating on the Cowboys. I got to hate <laughs> on my, my guys, too. We, we did pretty bad last year. Yeah, we did. Uh, no, no, no lies there, you know. But, uh, yeah, the only team that I would honestly go out and pick up the third and fourth receivers when I found out my a team was playing the Jaguars, I was like, oh, there's still one or two receivers there. Let me get them and plug them in. And great fantasy year. So, yeah, so that's the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they lost Maurice Jones through, so... Just look for them to continue heading downhill. Then we have the Texans from Houston. They were really bad. They were the worst team in the league record-wise last year. Um, yeah, Case Keenum is going to be their starter. And if you haven't heard of him, uh, I understand. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Andre Johnson wants out their best wide receiver. So it's never a good sign when you're bringing in a new quarterback. And your best wide receiver wants to leave town. So not looking so good for them next year. Then we have the Titans and their failed experiment in quarterback in Jake Locker. Now, if you remember this, this was the 2012 draft where I think five or six quarterbacks were drafted in the first round and only one of them was good, and that was... No, the 2011. That was um, Cam Newton. I was going to say, 2012, they had some you know, good yeah. quarterbacks there. Yeah, but um, that was Cam Newton was really good, and then the Christian Ponders, the Jake Lockers and so on and so forth, Brandon Whedon. Um, not so good after that. So, yeah, and he's going to be their starter. So good luck for you, and you lost Chris Johnson, your only offensive threat you had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's if why you, you would like a general manager, I am available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I, I'll come in. I, I'll even coach for you guys. Think about that and take a discount. A million dollars a year, I'll be happy. Promise you I will. Okay, 500000 all right, honestly, fifty thousand a year, and I, I got you, Golden. At least a seven and nine record every year. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> this is where you want me, and I move on. <laughs> so. Nope. Then let's keep going. Good. Let's keep oh. selling yourself 10, shorter 000? and shorter. And <laughs> Five thousand. Two thousand. <laughs> I'll pay you to do it, please. Okay, so I couldn't, I couldn't shrink any more out of the screen. So I think it'd be a compliment for you though, if you, if you coached or general managed their team. Any, any time like there was a Redskins game with them, which is not necessarily going to happen that often, but uh, I would not throw the game. I would not throw the game. I would not throw the game. <laughs> that is, you wouldn't. The players would. <laughs> ah, so there's, there's the way around it. There's the way around it. But, yeah, so let's move it on to the pride of this division. That is the Indianapolis Colts. And I think they will do pretty well. Now, they don't really have that great of a defense. Uh, they lost Antoine Bethea. I don't know how big of a difference that will make, but that will make a little bit of a difference. Um, but Andrew Luck is a stud, and they're hoping that uh, Trent Richardson in his second yeah, full yeah. year in their He's offense, he that plays their gamble the will pay off. He plays for the a Colts. A stud who plays team. for the Colts. Yeah. But um, a stud who plays yeah. for the Colts. And if you don't know what that means, look it up on Google. I actually don't have to know what that means. That's all right. Don't worry about that. A stud is a kind of horse. <laughs> a male horse. That makes babies. <laughs> <laughs> that makes ponies. Eh? Or colts, you might say. Get it? Uh, uh, go ahead, Go ahead. <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to take it from the worst division in football to a pretty good division in football, generally speaking, and that is the NFC South. And I'm not really going to run through it even as much as I did the AFC South. Just pretty much know that in the past four or five years, whatever team has won the division has not won the division the next year, and it's been one of another team that steps up. And now usually it's a carousel between Tampa Bay, uh, Atlanta Falcons, Panthers, and, uh, man, the Saints. Ah, there we go. I finally got them all there. 
Um, but Panthers won it last year, except for they lost all their wide receivers. So Cam Newton's going to have to have a hell of a year when he has nobody to throw it to. Um, they're not going to win it. Tampa Bay is certainly not going to win it, even though I think they are getting better. Bringing in Lovey Smith, uh, that is a big step in the right direction. He's a great head coach. He's shown it for years o- over there with the Chicago Bears. They were always right there on the brink. He even went to the Super Bowl once, didn't win it. Of course, it doesn't help when Rex Grossman is your quarterback, but mm. well, what can you do? And, um, yeah, so my bet is that the Falcons will win it this year, and that is because they are the only team in this division that really has some really great wide receivers, and this is a passing league. And so you're looking at Roddy White, Julio Jones, really coming together. Those two guys are going to light this year up. So I, I bet the Falcons will win it all. And, yeah, Saints, possibility with Drew Brees, you're never never that far away because he's a beast, but yeah, you never know. But, that yeah, those are that was my quick, super, super quick, quick, division previews for the AFC and NFC South. But let us know what you think about any of the football stories we talked about. Hit us up at Where's My Face on Twitter. Of course, Google+, Facebook, Where's My Face at gmail.com, and comments down below. Let us know what you think. But yeah, so that was the show for tonight. I mean, man, we packed a lot of topics in there. I don't know. Let us know if you like it this way. Do you like it better that we jam-pack it full of sports uh, topics, or would you like us just to you know mellow out and have a little conversation about a couple? Like we Reminisce do. about the days of old. You know, hold hands and walk down that cheery lane. All right, we might not yeah. even go that far. Uh, I mean, unless they want to. I mean, if you want to hold my hand. No, 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 I don't care what they want. There, there could the be page. somebody out there who wants them. Let me know in comments down below if you want to hold my hand. I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> I'd like to know. You know, but um, we are still running the Pick My Beard contest. Uh, so that'll be going through the end of September. And in that contest, you can tell me any way to shave. I have trimmed up a little bit. And it does look weird. We got some new lights, and so all my hair looks a lot lighter. No, I did not dye it. It is my natural, beautiful color. Uh... Can't want me on that one. That one's just too serious. You cannot want me on that one, but yeah. I want you on whatever I want. Let me know how you want me to shave my beard. Again, I will do anything you say. Half beard, you know... Crazy like lines. I don't care. I can't do like crazy star designs. I'm just not that artistic. But yeah, let us know and I'll wear it for a show. So all your suggestions down below or at any of the aforementioned sites. Do it but now. I think that's gonna... <laughs> do it now. Do it now. I want to see them right now. <laughs> but I think that's going to about do it for the show tonight. As always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Are we? All right. We are.